Bye.
Tune in for this month's Message in the Middle. Join Pastor Turner every Wednesday this month at 12 noon for inspirational moments as well as a time of prayer. Don't forget to drop your prayer request into the comments section. Spread the word and tune in on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. We'll see you in the comments. Boulevard family, as we all know, February is Black History Month. During the entire month, we will recognize black achievement and excellence. The first week, our theme is Black Medical Achievement, during which we will be spotlighting persons on the front lines of the medical field. This includes all medical personnel, scientists, and all other healthcare professionals. If you or one of your loved ones are a medical professional, please send in a photo with their names and title to bray.christina at theboulevard.org. We want to take the time to recognize these individuals and their contributions to the medical field. Boulevard family, save the date. On February 26th, the Outreach Ministry will host a virtual boot camp, which will be led by our own military leaders. All members are invited to attend this virtual event designed to educate, motivate, and challenge existing and potential volunteers. Registration starts February 4th. Invite your life group and other team members to register and attend. For a century, Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church has held service to its community as a hallmark of our ministry. So as we look forward to celebrating a century of service, we want to serve our city as an act of celebration. So from now through March 2022, we are inviting every disciple and ministry of our church to join us in logging 1,000 hours of community service for our 100th anniversary. Email outreach at theboulevard.org to sign up to serve and help us accomplish 1,000 for 100. The MBCC Scholarship Committee will hold a virtual informational meeting on Sunday, January 30th, 2022 for high school seniors and adults applying for the 2022 MBCC Scholarship. Helpful information, including eligibility, requirements, and deadlines will be shared in this meeting. To RSVP or for more info, email Minister Chris Watson at watson.christopher at the boulevard.org. The Mississippi Boulevard Media Production Team is seeking volunteers to join our dynamic team. Have you always wondered how what you see online during our virtual worship service happens? Do you have broadcast media experience? or no experience, but still interested in learning. We are looking for you. This is your opportunity to get hands-on experience. If you are interested in more information or joining the team, please contact Christina Bray at bray.christina at theboulevard.org. We are live, Boulevard family. Tune in on Sundays for our live virtual worship experience emanating from our Midtown Sanctuary. The Boulevard is the place to be for soul-stirring worship and a timely word from God. We're on Facebook and YouTube at 11 a.m. every Sunday. Services will be rebroadcast at 6 p.m. January marks the beginning of a new year and for most of us, an opportunity to reflect on 2021 to make plans for 2022. We think about our great gifts and all the fabulous food. Forgive yourself for all the overeating and set health goals for the new year. Here are 10 tips to help you achieve your New Year's health goals. Find your motivation. Have a plan. Make goals. Track what you eat. Use reliable resources. Eat breakfast every day. Fill up on vegetables. Exercise. Take it slow. Be prepared for lapses. A lapse is when you temporarily fall off the wagon. This is a normal part of the process but don't use it as an excuse to throw in the towel just yet. Every day is a new chance to start over, so return to your healthy lifestyle immediately. Good luck! Calling all Boulevard couples, we want to celebrate you. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary this month, let us know by submitting your name, anniversary, and the number of years you're celebrating on our website at theboulevard.org slash anniversaries. We will honor you during our online worship experience on the fourth Sunday of each month. Calling all kids kindergarten through fifth grade. Disciple Town is where you want to be. Sunday virtual worship begins at 1230. Click the link in eNews to join us as we learn about Christ and the Bible. And get ready to explore. Join Miss Monica for Disciple Town Discovery, a place to try new things. We're learning more about God and ourselves through movement, the arts, and cooking. Look out for more information via eNews and at theboulevard.org. 
middle schoolers, there's a new place for you to grow. Join Ms. Ty each Sunday at 12.30 noon on Zoom for Evolve. High schoolers, the Nexus Pod is on IG Live every Sunday at noon. If you're a middle, high school, or college age student, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Nexus Boulevard Youth so you don't miss a thing. If your age is 18 to 25, Cram Ministry is for you. Cram, Change Requires Alternative Measures, is the Boulevard's college age ministry that seeks to assist post secondary students in making a healthy transition into young adulthood. Don't miss our Zoom sessions every Friday night at 6 p.m. Email Minister Chris Watson for more information at watson.christopher at theboulevard.org. The Boulevard continues to be a blessing to others, whether it's feeding the hungry, showing love to essential workers, or any number of community efforts. We couldn't do it without your generosity. Your giving makes the difference. There are multiple ways to give. Text Boulevard Midtown to 77977, Cash App Mississippi Boulevard, PayPal, or by mail. Remember to use hashtag Boulevard Connect to share your watch party, virtual life group, or social media post about how much you enjoyed our most recent service. To make sure you never miss what's happening at the Boulevard, follow us on social media and sign up for a weekly e-news by emailing info at theboulevard.org. Greetings and welcome to the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. We are glad you have taken the time to worship with us. Here at the Boulevard, we are a church leading, learning, living, and loving without limits. And we pray that as you worship with us today, you will feel the presence of God right where you are. Now, if you are worshiping with us via Facebook Live, take a moment right now to share the stream. If you are watching via YouTube, click the bell to subscribe. Boulevard family, as we come to the close of another month, we'd like to take the time to celebrate life and love. First, for those of you who have celebrated a birthday during the month of January, please drop your name in the comments section so that we may celebrate life with you. Our prayer is that the love, grace, and peace of God be with you forever. We also want to celebrate love as we recognize those of you who are celebrating another year of marital bliss. Now, we would like to take a moment to recognize and celebrate those of you who have shared your anniversaries with us. Major and Egg Beckton, 19 years. Chris and Tabitha Liddell, 28 years. Michael and Amanda Levy, 32 years. Lynn and Shirley Washington, 47 years. James and Versi Brown, 58 years. Elder Emeritus Charles and Jesse Boyle, 73 years. Couples, continue putting your trust in God who brought you together, knowing that whatever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Again, we are so happy you joined us today. Now, now let's, let's worship, worship God, God together. together. All right, Boulevard, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. Let's lift up the worthy name of Jesus. He's worthy, yes, he is.
sisters and brothers, as we prepare to go to the table of the Lord, I would, even in your homes, I want you to get back in the practice of being in person worship. And I want you to stand in your homes as we affirm our faith. Come on, let's say it together. As members of the Christian church, we confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and proclaim him Lord and Savior of the world. In Christ's name and by his grace, we accept our mission of witness and service to all people. We rejoice in God, maker of heaven and earth, and in God's covenant of love, which binds us to God and to one another. Through baptism into Christ, we enter into newness of life and are made one with the whole people of God. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, we are joined together in discipleship and in obedience to Christ. At the table of the Lord, we celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and the presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the light of scripture and the bonds of Christian faith. We yield ourselves to God that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessings, glory, and honor be to God forever and the people of God said, Amen. Well, my brothers and my sisters, as we have just recited, it is at the table of the Lord that we celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and the presence of Jesus Christ. We're grateful that the living word took on human flesh, dwelt among us, and died on Calvary's cross. And so as we prepare our hearts to partake of the bread and the cup, Let's bow our heads as we pray. Eternal and gracious God, we are eternally grateful for your love for us. Your love demonstrated that in the midst of our sin, while we were still in our sins, Jesus Christ died for us. And that is what we come to this table to celebrate and to give you thanks for, that Jesus laid down his life how we shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins and to give us eternal life. We pray that you would bless us as we partake and we ask that you would empower us to continue to share this gospel until all have heard it. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and the people of God said, Amen. My sisters and my brothers, it was on that night that Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples that he took bread. He blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, take, eat. This is my body. Let's eat together. That same hour, after the same manner, Jesus took the cup and he said to his disciples this cup is the new covenant in my blood drink all of it in remembrance of me let's drink the cup together for as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup you and I proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And all the people of God said, Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, it is now time for us to worship God through giving our tithes and our offerings. I know we're just a few weeks into a new year, but can you testify in the comment section and the chat that God has been good. Just type, God is good. God is good. God has supplied our needs. All that we have has come from God. And so I want us to prepare to give our tithes and our offerings. We know what the word of the Lord tells us to bring the full tithe into the storehouse. And so today, even as you're in your homes worshiping, I want you to prepare to give of your tithes and to give of your offerings unto the Lord. And as we prepare to give, I'm going to pray and then I'll give you instructions 
of how you can give today. Let's pray. God, thank you for your everlasting love. Thank you for all of your provision. And we come now to worship you by giving our tithes and our offerings, trusting your word, honoring you as we worship in giving. We pray that you would bless us as we give. And I pray over every person, every household, that they will not live a moment in lack, but that you would do what your word says. You'll open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing so that there will be no more room for us to receive it. We're grateful and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Well, let's go ahead and give. You can give electronically today. The easiest way for you to give is to take out your smartphone, hold it up to the QR code on the screen. It's going to take you to our push pay format. You can also give through Cash App or you can give through PayPal. Chance might be you want to mail in your tithes and offerings to our church. You can do that. Mail them to Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. Disciples of Christ, located at 70 North Bellevue Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. Come on, let's worship in our giving. Let's honor God and let's continue praising the Lord. How many of you know that our God is still worthy to be praised, worthy to receive the glory and the honor? Even in the times that we're living in, we're going through a pandemic, so many civil injustices, but our God is still worthy to be praised, worthy to be honored, and worthy to be adored. Why don't you just right where you are, lift your hands, and just begin to give Him the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We offer you praise, O oh God. Oh Lord, we give you praise and oh Lord, we bless your name and we lift our voices. To say thank you, and it's for your goodness and your mercy towards us. And it's for for your goodness. Towards us, said it's for, for your, for your goodness and your mercy. Towards us, we are
your goodness and your mercy towards us. You said it's far, it's far, it's far. For your goodness, Jesus, you've been so good to us. And your mercy towards us. Oh, yes, it's far. Your 
mercy. Toward us. Say it one more time for me. Born. 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 I want you to just reflect on his goodness. And your mercy. Toward us. Say it one more time, y'all. Somebody needs to think about how good God has been. Even when you didn't deserve it. He was still good to you. You should have been dead, sleeping in your grave. Oh, but he made all that behave. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. unmerited favor for blessing you in spite of you we thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and I know you're in your homes but go ahead and give God the best praise that you can come on praise him so that your neighbors hear you so that your pets are looking at your strange go ahead and praise him for he is worthy of all of the honor all of the praise that we can give unto him well, sisters and brothers, as we prepare our hearts to go into the Word of God on today, as we continue on our annual theme of preparing the church to transform lives for the next century, I believe there is a word from God on today that comes to us from Genesis chapter 32. I encourage you in your quiet moments to read the chapter in entirety for it does constitute the context of which we shall preach on this day but due to the length of the passage and the limitations on our time I just want to read from verse 22 to the end of the chapter let's hear what God has already said in his word and after which we'll unfold what God will say to us on this day here's what it says the same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had, and Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go. The day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. 
But he said, what is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose up upon him as he passed, Peniel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. I want to take you back in this passage. and I want you to meditate on what happens in these words in verse 28. It says, then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. You have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. For the time that's ours to share on this Lord's Day, I want to talk from this thought. God is still changing lives. Come on, if you haven't shared this already, I want you to go ahead and share it, and I want you to post the words, God is still changing lives. Brian Stevenson has been on the vanguard of the continuing crusade for a more equitable and just criminal justice system, particularly for minorities, the marginalized, and the poor. His treatise on his justice advocacy work is a book entitled Just Mercy, A Story of Justice and Redemption. And in it, he writes powerfully and with great profundity, bringing humanity back to how we examine the administration of justice in this country. In my estimation, he allows us all to resonate at some level, even with the worst offenders in our society, when he writes, proximity has taught me some basic and humbling truths including this vital lesson. Each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. So often, instead of focusing on who a person is or who they can be, we're so caught up on what they've done. And although our actions come from the condition of our hearts, character, emotional and spiritual condition, they do not have the last word on us or how God sees us. And someone ought to take a moment and pause for the cause and shout right there that God is not solely hung up on that which you have done in life. As a matter of fact, when God sees us, he not only sees us as the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, but God sees us through the eyes of divine possibility. It is through the lens of divine possibility where God looks beyond what we have done and maybe where we are on life's journey and sees who we ultimately can become. And if there is anyone in scripture whose life speaks volumes of how God changes lives, it is Jacob. He is one of those biblical characters who stands out in the stories of the patriarchs. His transformation is so uh, radical. By the end of his story, we almost do not know who he is. We really have to carefully read his story in Genesis because it is easy to think that Jacob and Israel are two different people after Genesis 35 when God for the second time announces a change in his name. But it is necessary for us to see how pronounced, profound, and powerful the change that God brought into his life. Through his life, someone needs to be made aware and others need to be reminded that the same God that changed Jacob's life and still uh, is still alive and available to bring a change in your life. That God does not write us off, throw us away, or give up on us. Rather, God takes you just as you are and makes you into who he is destined for you to be. This is really one of the lessons we learn through the message God gives the prophet Jeremiah. When he tells the prophet to go down to the 
potter's house. And when he gets there, he sees a, 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 a word picture. He sees an image of the potter with the marred pot on the wheel. And despite the pot being marred, the potter doesn't throw the pot away. On the contrary, the potter keeps the pot on the wheel and his hands on the pot until he fashions and molds and reworks that pot into something new. In the same way, when we are broken, when we are flawed, when we, we, we have evil intents, when we deal with our sinful ways, God doesn't give up on us. No, God keeps working on us. And in order to keep working on us, God keeps his hands on us. And do I have a witness who's out there in the cyber sanctuary who is glad that even when you've been trifling, when you've been low down, when you continue to fall short of the glory of God, God doesn't throw you away, but God has kept his hands on you. And that's what gives us the confidence that God is still changing lives because God keeps his hands on us. In this text, we encounter a familiar passage in the life of a biblically famous person who gives us a fresh perspective, allowing all of us to see that if God can change anybody, God can change everybody for good and for God's glory. We learn from Jacob a few truths that give you and I confidence that God is still changing lives. Now, if you, lives, you know if God is still changing lives, go ahead and send some hearts up right there on Facebook. First of all, we see that God changes lives, watch this, despite our past story. <laughs> the miracle of change in Jacob's life when we look at who he ultimately becomes based on who he has been. In the womb of his mother, he tussles with his twin brother Esau and at birth, as Esau emerges from the womb as the oldest, he cannot get far from his younger brother Jacob without Jacob holding on to his heel. Therefore, when it came time for naming, Although it was customary in Jewish culture to name a child as a pronouncement of a positive future and destiny, he is named based on the events surrounding his birth. Jacob means supplanter. And it speaks of someone who has taken the place of another, particularly with the use of force, scheming, and strategy. So it was from that point, Jacob's life was defined by trickery and manipulation. He, you, if you remember the story, he first takes advantage of his brother's hunger and leverages it into taking his brother's birthright away. In the closing moments of their father's life, when the father was getting ready to close his eyes and sleep that long sleep of death, and he was going to bless the eldest son as it was custom through collusion with their mother, Jacob is able to take the blessing meant for Esau for himself. He finally meets a challenge in Laban as he intended to marry Rachel, but ends up getting Leah, costing him 14 years of his life. But in the end, he gets what he wants, which was the hand of Rachel in marriage. Jacob's life has been characterized by trickery. And to be honest, we cannot help when you read the pages of his story to see the mercy of God because the very fact he makes it to chapter 32 alive is because he does not get what he deserves. For what he has done and the threat on his life from his own blood, brother Esau, Jacob should be dead. However, the mercy of God is that God does not give Jacob what he deserves, but instead sees him through the eyes of divine possibility, gracing him with a chance to change. And this ought to speak to some of us, if not all of us. We ought to stop allowing other people to assess our lives solely on the latest chapters of our lives. If we all would tell the truth, we have not always been like this. 
There are chapters in our past that are filled with sin and shame and manipulation and arrogance and self-centeredness and selfishness. And you can keep expanding the list. You know, if too mean to live and not fit to die were a person, it would be us because all of the crazy things we've done in our past. And the only reason we made it to a defining moment where the Lord changed us is because of the mercy of God who did not give us what we deserved but gave us another chance to get it right that ultimately brought us to our knees and to the reality that Jacob came to in chapter 31 that he was not worthy but the faithfulness of God as Jeremiah records in Lamentations ought to speak to, to, to Jacob situation and even to us where it says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they're new every morning we ought to thank God in that even when we did not deserve it God kept us alive and brought us to a point in our lives where he could work on us to bring about a change in our lives where we can testify I'm not who I want to be you can go ahead and finish it thank God I'm not what I used to be because I've been changed. Why don't you clap your hands in your home and thank God for the change in your life. Someone needs to hear this today because you feel that you are unworthy of the mercy and grace of God. Nevertheless, it's not your choice as to whether or not you can receive God's grace and mercy. It's God's choice alone to grant you grace and mercy that kept you alive to see another day, that grants you another opportunity. And with the life that God has blessed you with, you have to open your heart, let Jesus in, and he will make the difference in your life. That, 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 that's the first thing, but here, here, here's the second thing that you need to know, that in addition to God working on you and changing you despite your past story, you need to know that God is at work to change us through life's struggles. The larger context we have of this moment in Jacob's life story is that um, he was on his way to a reunion with his brother, who I just told you earlier, he is taken advantage of and who now he has word for some years now that his brother Esau wants to take his life. To possibly uh, cause Esau's heart to soften, Jacob sends ahead uh, to Esau some gifts and his family. And then the night before, they are to meet Jacob, assist his family over the Jabbok River. And when his family has all crossed, the text says there, Jacob was alone. As if it wasn't enough to have the fear and anxiety swirling around in his head about his upcoming reunion with his brother Esau out of the darkness of night jumps an unnamed, unidentified man who begins to wrestle and tussle with Jacob. They wrestle for what may be hours in the dark. And as the sun began to crack the horizon with no clear winner being declared, the text says in verse 25 that when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket. Jacob's hip was put out of joint and he wrestled with him. And then he said, let me go for the day is broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. I want you to know that it was in the midst of struggle that Jacob is changed. And what made the difference in the struggle is that he did not let go. It's through his tenacity and the struggle 
and the plan of God for his life, Jacob is changed in that he is no longer called Jacob the trickster and supplanter, but his name is now Israel. I don't want you to miss this. Israel has been taken to mean only he who strives with God. But if you take a closer look at the etymology of the word, we discover that it actually means he who is upright with God. The one who has been crooked in his dealings in life is now declared upright with God. He has been changed because whereas Jacob might have been his personality, Israel was his destiny. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Type it in the comment section. I know there are those of you under the sound of my voice who resonate with that. Some of you, it's your testimony that it was in the midst of one of the most difficult seasons of your life that God changed you through the death of a loved one, hitting rock bottom of addiction, having your marriage fall apart, the near death experience that you went through and God allowed these moments to get your attention so that you could be changed. The reason why you're where you are in life is not just because you like Jacob held on, but in the midst of the struggle, God was holding on to you. And this is a message to someone on this day that maybe the struggle and the restlessness you have in life is because God wants to bring about a change in your life. The turbulence you're experiencing might be because God has new coordinates for your destination so that you can land in his will. Possibly the dissatisfaction you might have in your relationship or marriage has nothing to do with the person you are with, but possibly it is with the person that you have become and God is rocking your world so that you can change. Or maybe the reality that you are constantly in conflict with people is because you are not at peace within yourself and until you allow God to speak to the winds and the waves of the storm that's raging inside of you, a change will not come in your life. And whatever it is, be like Jacob. Make sure you don't let go until the Lord blesses you. Here's a final word today, church, that will encourage us to know that God is still changing lives. God changes us to be able to handle the next season of our lives. Jacob, now named Israel, leaves this wrestling match, limping, but with a new lease on life. He is now, remember, upright with God. And the reason I believe this is important to note is because he's going to need God like never before to make it in the next season of his life. Because after 20 years of exile, Jacob comes home. He has a favorable favorable reunion with Esau, and although they are not the best they could be in terms of their relationship, at least Jacob has come home. But little does he know what he's getting ready to endure. He would not have been able to survive the next season of his life with his old self. He gets home. And his only daughter, Dinah, is sexually assaulted. She's raped. To make matters worse, the one who violated her had the nerve to then ask for her hand in marriage. Then through his journeys, as he is journeying, Rachel, the one who he worked 14 years to be her husband, Rachel ends up dying in childbirth. And if that wasn't enough, when you fast forward the stages of his life, his beloved son Joseph 
was kidnapped by his other sons, Joseph's brothers, and he was sold into slavery. His life has been so rough that when he describes his life in, he describes his life in this way in Genesis 47 and 9, few and evil have been the days of the years of my life. Any one episode that he has endured could make any sane person go crazy. But what has made the difference is that he has been changed. And the change that happened in his life allowed him to survive through the most difficult seasons of his life. I want you to lean in, child of God, because you need to hear this word. That there is a necessity for change in your life because you cannot take an old you into a new season. Can I say it again? You cannot take an old you into a new season because if you take an old you into a new season, you might not have the integrity and wisdom or even the faith to handle what's ahead. And so it is. We must all change and grow and develop and mature because the moment we stop growing, we die. There's a new you that God wants to reveal in your life. But you have to trust God enough to let go of who you used to be. <laughs> the truth be told, it's not everybody bringing up your past. is that you're struggling to let go of who you used to be. And we will never be all that God would have for us to be unless we're willing to let God change our lives. This is a word for all of us, whether you're saved or unsaved, because even once you say yes to Jesus, our lives in Christ are ones where we're born again. And whenever someone is born again, they have to continue to mature and to grow. And what we know is that maturity and growth are all positive ways of describing change. It is the spirit that works in us to will and to do God's good pleasure. God is still changing lives. And I want to speak to somebody today who has been living with shame and guilt because of your past. We serve a God who can take you from wherever you are and without regard for what you have done and change you and do something great and marvelous with your life. But hear me, my sisters and my brothers. You've got to let him in. You've got to make a decision that you want to be better. And the way as people of God we can be better is by giving our lives to Jesus Christ. And so I want to extend an invitation on today. Matter of fact, there are two invitations I want to give because it's time to make a change on today for somebody. If you're watching, you hear my voice today and you've not put your faith, hope, and trust in Jesus. I want to tell you, Jesus is inviting you not only to spend eternal life with him, but he is inviting you on a day-by-day -day journey to walk with him as you go through life. And if you want that, here's the change and where it begins. Confess that Jesus Christ has died for your sins that he's risen from the dead and that he is Lord of your life and you shall be saved. We believe in God for you and I hope you would make the decision to make a change in your life because of Jesus. And there's a second invitation. If there's somebody that needs to make a change from being outside of fellowship with the church to becoming a part of a church. 
And wherever you're watching from today, we would love for you to be a part of Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, as we do the work of transforming lives for the next century. If you're in either one of those two categories, whether it is to give your life to Christ or to unite with this church, I want you to know there are two ways you can respond. You can either send an email to connect at the boulevard.org or you can send a text message to 901-446-4242. Send a text, send that email, and if you text the word belong to 901 446-4242 or send that email to connect to the boulevard.org you're going to receive a link in reply click that link fill it out in entirety submit it and our team is going to be in touch with you to make that decision we're going to give you a moment our musicians are going to bless us go ahead make a change today send that text message send that email change is coming into your life it's even coming to your house and into your relationships come on bless us brothers come on Changed. Come on, testify. It's the last time I'm going to ask you. Just type in the comment section or the chat, I've been changed. I've been changed. And we praise God for the change that has come into your life. We're getting ready to go from this time of worship, but I want to remind you quickly, as I thank God for those of you who came out to serve this past Thursday to distribute uh, the at-home COVID testing kits. I want to thank you for your service. I want to continue to remind, continue to remind you all uh, to log your hours um, on our website. We want to get to the thousand uh, community service hours in celebration of our centennial. You go to our website, click the graphic that says a thousand for one hundred, and log your hours. We thank you for your service. And then as well, we look forward. We're looking forward to African American History Month. We've got some living Black excellence that we want to celebrate as we go into the month of February. If you are a healthcare worker, if you are a healthcare worker in our church. Uh, we want you to send in your name and your field of service as well as a picture. I want you to email that in uh, to bray.christina at the boulevard.org as soon as you can. Uh, we want to celebrate the living history that is among us. And then I want you to join me and clergy from across this state who are calling the african-american church to a day of prayer on february the first february the first is the african-american church's day of prayer for the state of tennessee we've got spiritual wickedness in high places in this state and this kind only comes out but by prayer and fasting and so on february first i want you to join us across this state as we pray for a brighter tomorrow for our state and then brothers and sisters we look forward we're so grateful that there are persons who are connected with our church who live beyond uh, 100 miles and I want to uh, connect with you this coming Saturday this coming Saturday at 1 p.m. the final Saturday uh, in the month of January we want you to join myself and Lady B on uh, our pastors virtual connect uh, I just want to connect with
Timothy, I want to be able to see your faces and thank God for you connecting with our church. And uh, you will receive communication for us if you've already been uh, connected with us. But if you want to be a part uh, of this, I want you to send an email to bean.antoine at theboulevard.org. He's our digital engagement manager. I want you to send an email to him to let him know that you want to be a part of it and he'll send you out the link to join into Pastors Virtual Connect. Well, brothers and sisters, if you've been blessed today, let's celebrate the change that has happened in our lives as we go throughout the rest of this week. I want you to join me Wednesday morning, 7.14 a.m. for the 7.14 prayer call and then at 12 noon for the message in the middle. Let me bless you as we go from this time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace from this time forward, even forevermore, as we have been changed. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you.
Tune in for this month's Message in the Middle. Join Pastor Turner every Wednesday this month at 12 noon for inspirational moments as well as a time of prayer. Don't forget to drop your prayer request into the comments section. Spread the word and tune in on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. We'll see you in the comments. Boulevard family, as we all know, February is Black History Month. During the entire month, we will recognize black achievement and excellence. The first week, our theme is Black Medical Achievement, during which we will be spotlighting persons on the front lines of the medical field. This includes all medical personnel, scientists, and all other healthcare professionals. If you or one of your loved ones are a medical professional, please send in a photo with their names and title to bray.christina at theboulevard.org. We want to take the time to recognize these individuals and their contributions to the medical field. Boulevard family, save the date. On February 26th, the Outreach Ministry will host a virtual boot camp, which will be led by our own military leaders. All members are invited to attend this virtual event designed to educate, motivate, and challenge existing and potential volunteers. Registration starts February 4th. Invite your life group and other team members to register and attend. For a century, Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church has held service to its community as a hallmark of our ministry. So as we look forward to celebrating a century of service, we want to serve our city as an act of celebration. So from now through March 2022, we are inviting every disciple and ministry of our church to join us in logging 1,000 hours of community service for our 100th anniversary. Email outreach at theboulevard.org to sign up to serve and help us accomplish 1,000 for 100. The MBCC Scholarship Committee will hold a virtual informational meeting on Sunday, January 30th, 2022 for high school seniors and adults applying for the 2022 MBCC Scholarship. Helpful information, including eligibility, requirements, and deadlines will be shared in this meeting. To RSVP or for more info, email Minister Chris Watson at watson.christopher at theboulevard.org. The Mississippi Boulevard Media Production Team is seeking volunteers to join our dynamic team. Have you always wondered how what you see online during our virtual worship service happens? Do you have broadcast media experience? Or no experience, but still interested in learning? We are looking for you. This is your opportunity to get hands-on experience. If you are interested in more information or joining the team, please contact Christina Bray at bray.christina at theboulevard.org. We are live, Boulevard family. Tune in on Sundays for a live virtual worship experience emanating from our Midtown Sanctuary. The Boulevard is the place to be for soul-stirring worship and a timely word from God. We're on Facebook and YouTube at 11 a.m. every Sunday. Services will be rebroadcast at 6 p.m. January marks the beginning of a new year and for most of us, an opportunity to reflect on 2021 to make plans for 2022. We think about our great gifts and all the fabulous food. Forgive yourself for all the overeating and set health goals for the new year. Here are 10 tips to help you achieve your new year's health goals. Find your motivation. Have a plan. Make goals. Track what you eat. Use reliable resources. Eat breakfast every day. Fill up on vegetables. Exercise. Take it slow. Be prepared for lapses. A lapse is when you temporarily fall off the wagon. This is a normal part of the process, but don't use it as an excuse to throw in the towel just yet. Every day is a new chance to start over, so return to your healthy lifestyle immediately. Good luck! Calling all Boulevard couples, we want to celebrate you. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary this month, let us know by submitting your name, anniversary, and the number of years you're celebrating on our website at theboulevard.org slash anniversaries. We will honor you during our online worship experience on the fourth Sunday of each month. Calling all kids kindergarten through fifth grade. Disciple Town is where you want to be. Sunday virtual worship begins at 1230. Click the link in eNews to join us as we learn about Christ and the Bible and get ready to explore. Join Miss Monica for Disciple Town Discovery, a place to try new things. We're learning more about God and ourselves through movement, the arts, and cooking. Look out for more information via e-news and at theboulevard.org. 
middle schoolers, there's a new place for you to grow. Join Ms. Ty each Sunday at 12.30 noon on Zoom for Evolve. High schoolers, the Nexus Pod is on IG Live every Sunday at noon. If you're a middle, high school, or college age student, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Nexus Boulevard Youth so you don't miss a thing. If your age is 18 to 25, Cram Ministry is for you. Cram, Change Requires Alternative Measures, is the Boulevard's college age ministry that seeks to assist post secondary students in making a healthy transition into young adulthood. Don't miss our Zoom sessions every Friday night at 6 p.m. Email Minister Chris Watson for more information at watson.christopher at theboulevard.org. The Boulevard continues to be a blessing to others, whether it's feeding the hungry, showing love to essential workers, or any number of community efforts. We couldn't do it without your generosity. Your giving makes the difference. There are multiple ways to give. Text Boulevard Midtown to 77977, Cash App Mississippi Boulevard, PayPal, or by mail. Remember to use hashtag Boulevard Connect to share your watch party, virtual life group, or social media post about how much you enjoyed our most recent service. To make sure you never miss what's happening at the Boulevard, follow us on social media and sign up for our weekly e-news by emailing info at theboulevard.org.